What's good, Homo Squad? It's your boy, Homo Ziggy, and we back here with another video and another reaction. But this time, I bet, again, we got from Luesta. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I don't know what's wrong with my voice sometimes. But we good. <laughs> but we here from, an, we here, we got another video from Luesta, and this is the Eminem label curse now. In the description, it's saying about how we talk about Eminem's record label, Shady Records, and why the artists signed artists signed usually do bad up upon basically do bad upon joining and such. Hey, we all love Eminem. He said I love Eminem, but I always expect more from the artists he signed. True, because let's be honest, if you're signed to Eminem. And nine times out of ten, Eminem don't just collab with anybody. So the fact, and it is like this: not only the fact that he collabs with you, but if you're signed to his label, that means you get to see him on a, not to say maybe on a regular basis or whatnot. But if you're signed to his label, then my nigga, you that that means he had to see something in you that not only he wanted to collab with you, but he signed you to his record. Hey, for me, all I know is, shit, if I was signed to Eminem, do you, boy, I'll make sure I always do my best to make sure I always come in with that hate for him, because cause I know for a fact I got to be a part, if I'm, even if he's like the standard and such, I got to be at least a part with him. If I'm not first, I at least got to be second up to him. That's all I'm saying. And plus what he close with who we've got with like the likes of Dr. Dre and 50 Cent and now with Easy Mill and such trust me if you've known how Easy Mill is boy you see why he's, he signed Easy Mill but let's see the ones who 9 times out of 10 did bad you can say so we better check this out make sure you like comment and subscribe follow me on all my socials up there and without further ado let's get into this Eminem is one of the biggest stars in the history of hip-hop. Because of that reputation and commercial power, it's often assumed that just being near him is enough to uplift your Rex. career. But if you take a look at his track record when it comes to signing artists to shady records, his success rate is scarily low. At this point, it's so bad that it's a miracle anyone even still wants to sign a deal with his aftermath back to label. As the label turns 25 years old, they've racked up a huge catalog of failures that has left too many talented spitters to wither on the shelf, taking their best years as an MC from them to the point that they usually end up barely escaping with their careers. But is Eminem really the one to blame for their failures? Or can someone make the argument that the artist did it to True. themselves? It's your boy Luesta, and today we're investigating some of the stories of the rappers who signed to Shady and how it all went wrong. And by the end of the video, I want you to comment down below who's at fault for their downfalls. This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com. The global men's- If I ain't getting paid, but shout out to Manscaped. But look, if I ain't getting paid by them, I won't hear it. So, shout out to Manscaped. But let's get into the video. Shout out to y'all, shout out to y'all into the video. When you look at the stories from across the news, three decades into the label's existence, there are some common issues that seemingly always find their way to the surface. And it might suggest that when it's all said and done, Eminem really just doesn't know how to use his power to help other artists. One man who felt the fall from grace that can come with a short-lived successful run at Shady is none other than Obi Trice. Hailing from the same city as M, Detroit's own Obi Trice, real name no gimmicks, first caught Shady's attention while the rapper was still on the rise himself. It was a hot summer day and Eminem just dropped the Marshall Mathers LP. I shot out there from the hood, jumped in the Regal, shot up there to the studio, and spit for him from the passenger side of his car and gave him a CD. And he was like, all right, I'll holla. I really didn't think nothing of it. At that time in my life, my whole thought process was all fucked up. I ain't really seen the future with what I was going through. It wasn't like, oh my God, I just met Eminem. I really didn't see the vision that I could be saved or found like that until I got 
the phone call that they were ready for me. He changed my life around. He definitely changed my change in my pocket. Oh. I mean, hey. I mean, hell, that was how Eminem felt that when Dr. Dre hit him up in search and you see how his career turned out so let's see how obi officially signed to shady in 2000 obi had that kind of competitive spirit that eminem would gravitate toward and has even been on record saying that he bodied eminem on every track they did together on his debut album cheers obi got maybe the biggest eminem stimulus package we have ever seen not only did shady produce a bunch of songs on the record but he also appeared on five tracks as a result the record went gold and in a rare occurrence for an artist signed to the label it looked like obi had enough skill and support to stand on his own two feet as a result when it came time to drop second rounds on me obi was insistent that an overworked shady should take a step back you no know, i came out with second rounds on me which was an album that i did really without the help of eminem like i kind of really did that myself and brought it to eminem's attention because i didn't believe that that he should be working on my album d12's album 50 cent and he's an artist himself you know like i just wanted them to give him a break i showed him that you know, I can bring you an album without you having to be there every day and be involved in that. Although Eminem was impressed, the sales didn't equal to what he had done before. And with only one shady feature, the project sold exactly half. In 2008, Obi would leave the label once and for all. And since then, he's offered various explanations about what went wrong. For one thing, he had the misfortune of rising to fame around the same time as Shady's most successful signee. 50, 50 really did it to me, man. If there was no 50 Cent, my shit would have been out of here. All that more. I don't know about that now. Yeah, because I saw a comment where it says, where it is. Hold on. I saw a comment where it says, hold on. Yeah, right here about how OB blaming 50. Yeah, I mean, hey, he's saying about how two rappers can pop off at the same time. I mean, yeah. I mean, the same time when Eminem was coming up and such, getting more popular and popular, same thing as 50 Cent. When he came into the game, he got more popular and popular, and both of them was on the same level at that time. So, you really can't blame it on 50, my nigga. Nine times out of ten. And plus, if you see how Eminem helped you on the way up and such, and how your cop and how your records was and such, and you try to do it by yourself, even if you're not saying you're trying to say no hate M, but let me see what I want to show you. I can do the shit on my own and it doesn't have the same. And even though if it's sold, but it didn't have the same number as it did the first time you did an album and it was by Eminem. I'm just saying my guy, sometimes you need a little bit of that Eminem on it. One thing, he had the misfortune of rising to fame around the same time as Shady's most successful signee. 50, 50 really did it to me, man. If there was no 50 Cent, my shit would have been out of here. All that momentum he had, like Wangsta, when he came out, man, it was just like, you know, we, we fuck with Obi, but this guy right here is Tupac. <laughs> Shot nine times. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. damn. I'm talking. My brother was my manager at the time. I'm like, damn, we gotta get shot out. <laughs> On top of that, uh -uh, nah, nigga, nah. I mean, hey, still to this day, people are the re most people are still gonna be known. Most people are still gonna know Fifty for the infamous that he got shot nine times. Imagine that you get shot one time, you already you done right. Depending on where you got shot, but one shot you already done. This man got shot nine freaking times around him, and he's still alive. Still crazy to think about that. Just saying. <laughs> At, he felt that M's star power and how active he was in the game stifled his ability to foster his own relationships. Back then, when M didn't move. We did suffer some consequences from that. When I asked for a beat from Pharrell, in order for him to give me a beat, Eminem had to get on one of his songs and one of his beats as well. It was like, we give you this, and then you can get this. But like many of the signees to Shady, Obi doesn't think he was blameless. Because at the time, he was missing promo appearances, getting on Interscope boss Jimmy Iovine's bad side, and generally messing up. You know, I was young. Fresh out the hood, jumped into this music thing. It was a little overwhelming for me. I didn't seize the moment when I should have. So I had to move on and that's just how things go. It's a business first and that's just how it was. Everything cool though. Those are still my people over there at Interscope and Shady. That's family for life. 
On his independent grind since 2012, Obi is still immensely respected by fans who remember those early days of Shady. The only issue is that once he's left the label, no one beyond his hardcore fan base are really checking for him anymore. Yeah, Unfortunately, he wasn't the only one who suffered this fate, and it's one that Stat Quo knows all too well. A Dirty South lyricist who was killing it on a regional level, Stat Quo signed in 2003. Alongside 50, he was the only other artist to be signed to both Dre and Shady at the same time. With that kind of buzz he had, and how much additional fanfare he received after his appearances on the compilation album The Reup, Quo's debut album Statlanta was constantly teased. But sadly, the record wouldn't emerge until after he had been kicked off the label. After repeatedly being stalled, Stat got frustrated about the direction of the project and in one ill-advised attempt to assert his- Now, hey, this is- To me, this is how I look at it, that if you- Even if Eminem did sign you and you still- hit, Eminem did sign you and you think, oh, he was going to get this big thing and such. I'm not going to lie to you. If nobody... The fact that I can remember who Obi Trice is at the time, even if I've never listened to him before, but the fact that I can be able to know who Obi Trice is way before stat quo, I'm sorry. That just shows you that nigga, that even if you have, even if you're away from the, even if you signed away from the label and such, but people still can remember you and such. Hey, no disrespect to Stat Quo, but my nigga, if nobody even remembers who you are, then I'm sorry. That's nine times out of ten, I believe that's on you. That's just me. But let's see. Stat got frustrated about the direction of the project, and in one ill-advised attempt to assert his authority, he lost his connection to Eminem. It was a song called Dance On It wrote the chorus. And M wanted me to say the chorus. And I thought it was not good. If I would have said, yeah, that's it, that's the one we're going with, then I would have got my album. But I tried to be on some, no, I don't like that, that ain't a hit. And I really was arguing with like the top selling rapper of all time <laughs> on what the fuck it hit was. <laughs> what a dumb idiot I was. My yeah, nigga. You gonna argue with somebody who knows how to make hit songs after hit songs and it really slaps? So, A. Hey, like I said, that's on you, my nigga. How you gonna argue with somebody who knows how to make a hit? Like, nigga, what? Yeah, that, at least you know. <laughs> at least you know, nigga. At least you know. Selling rapper of all time <laughs> on what the fuck he hit <laughs> What a dumb idiot. I, my exact quote was, I'll put it out if you stay on the hook. And then I said, well, if you give me a million dollars, then I'll put it out. <laughs> and I said that, me and Eminem went like that. He was mad as shit. I would too. Having stayed on the independent circuit ever. Nigga, I would too. I know how to make a hit. You've seen my numbers. And you as a young up-and-comer, you telling me and how to make a hit? You telling me? Hell yeah, I would have been mad. <laughs> Nigga, you haven't done the shit. I, I guarantee you, that's how M, well, I don't know about him saying nigga now, but he would have been like on the, vo on like the, mental, of the aura of like, Nigga, do you know who the fuck I am? I'm not even trying to say it like that, like, nigga, like, bro, ain't no way that a rookie like you, or up and coming rapper like you is gonna tell me a hit maker, hit making rapper, on how to make a hit. Nigga, what? <laughs> Having stayed on the independent circuit ever since then, Stat's true potential as an elite Southern MC was never fulfilled. Now it seems like he feels some type of way about that, as if you believe D12's bizarre, Stat allegedly ghost wrote the game's Black Slim Shady disc. So you, you weren't a fan? Oh, that song? No, yeah. no, no, no. I think I, I think you could have did better. Yeah. Or Stack Quo could have did better. What'd you say? Or Stack Quo could have did better. What are you trying to say? Hey. Are you saying Stack Quo helped write the song? Yeah, hey, I ain't saying nothing, man. I Shout out the game. <laughs> Where Stat might have turned his back on Shady, the same can't be said for Cassius. A Californian MC who became known as the greatest rapper in Orange County, Cassius jumped at the chance to sign with M's label in 2004. In fact, an entire barbershop overheard his conversation with Shady. Once M called like two days later, I was at a barbershop, you know what I mean? And Kept on the show for two years before surfacing on the re-up, Cassius made the most of the opportunity that came with being on the project 
and gave some of the standout verses on the entire album. Soon, he followed up the release with the County Hound EP in 2007, and with that, it looked like he was ready to blow. But like a lot of his contemporaries from that era, the changing realities of the music business left him shelved as the label focused on bigger stars. It wasn't anything over at Shady Records, it was just at Interscope Records. They were like, we can get Cassius and he can do a few hundred thousand, but M and 50? It was doing 10 million at the time. So it just made more sense for them to come with their albums. After I mean, hey, like, like freaking, who was it? Obi Trice said, it's a business first. So sometimes whoever is selling the most at the time, I mean, hell, it's basically like this. I ain't saying that nobody, I ain't saying Cassius couldn't do his thing and such. But when you got M and 50 selling 10 million, I'm sorry, as me as somebody who would work at the, if I see that M and 50 are doing this amount of money, this amount of records or copies sell to y'all, I'm sorry. Respects to you, but I'm focusing on these two motherfuckers, cause how the fuck, like nigga, what? Crazy work. Yeah, I'm focused on the entire shit at the time. Thing. So it just made more sense for them to come with their albums. After leaving the label in 2011 to go independent, Cassius believed this era basically represented the beginning of the end of Shady as a company that could really push stars. It's the politics of the game. Sometimes at a label, you spend too much and you gotta bring back something into your parent company and they have to go with the top acts at that time. Obi Trice's second rounds on me had come out and they didn't really push his album as they should have. That started a downfall for us as a company at that point. So M had to come out and do the most with our albums to make that money back. Obi's album was slamming, but it don't matter how dope your project is. You see what happened to some of 50 Cent's last project, it don't matter how good it is. If you're not getting the right promotion, you can only do so much. True. Renamed The Art of Dying, Cash's debut album wouldn't be released until 2012 and never made anywhere near the impact that it could have if it had been released on the major label imprint. But by Cash's own admission, he, much like Eminem, had his own demons to fight at the time. So I wanted to release music, and at that point, it was a struggle, like a personal struggle, you know? Like I used to, before the era became became cool, like I was like, for real, like a, you know, a pill head dude, like, you know, like a hundred Xanax, a hundred volumes, like, like his documented people, like, they ain't nothing to brag about, cause so I'm like, damn, nigga. Uh huh, yeah. <laughs> Hell nah, nigga. One Xanax is enough, but nigga, a hundred? It's, hold on. I don't want this. I don't want to put words in my mouth or put words in his mouth. But hold the fuck on. Is he still. I'ma just do this before y'all cut on my head. Is he still alive? <laughs> okay, yeah, he's still alive. Good. Cause. I ain't gonna lie to you, a hundred Xanax is crazy work. It's crazy work. So like, on a Most niggas can't even handle one Xan- Like at least five Xanax or whatnot, but a hundred? And, I, and I'm not even trying to say if you took all of it at one point, at one time, but I'm just saying, over a hundred Xanax, nigga, that's crazy. 100 Xanax, 100 volumes, like, like his documented people, like, they ain't nothing to brag about, because somebody probably does trying to play like how I was playing me. So, I wasn't as interested in the music as I, as I should have A man who is still connected to the Shady System as a writer, Cassius has always went to bat for Eminem. And even this Benzino, oh yeah, yeah. I remember the surface once again. I ran the search on the yeah, scene. Hey, even, the fact that even if he's not with Cash, even if he's not with Shady Records anymore, the fact that he still came in this year and came with a Benzino disc this year with Femzino, hey, that just shows you that even if certain shit when it comes to business doesn't come together, as long as y'all still got that like brotherhood, like familyhood type vibe, nigga, it even if y'all not even with even if the label if y'all not with the label no more. Y'all still connected by the music and love y'all had for one another. So the fact that he even did this this year <laughs> is crazy work. <laughs> Google and butt. Just pitch some motel with some nigga, you babe. 
But where Cassius thinks his own substance issues played a role in his demise as a major label artist, Bobby Creekwater feels that M's own battle with drugs meant that he wasn't in the position to guide anyone else's career. Rather than being sent music directly by Bobby, Eminem first heard about him through another rapper named The Seam, who had Bobby featured on his demo. Immediately, Shady was more intrigued by what he heard coming from Bobby and signed him in mid-2005. With a style reminiscent of Outkast's Andre 3000, Bobby had people's attention on mixtapes like Anthem to the Streets and Back to Briefcase. But in 2009, he revealed that he was done with Eminem's label, citing differences over the direction of his career. I, Bobby Creepwater, I'm officially off Shady. I'm no longer with Shady anymore. It's a part of ways, it's a business decision. It wasn't no bad blood or nothing like that. You understand what I'm saying? The relationship just ran its turn. You understand what I'm saying? And as far as Bobby Creep is concerned, I got big plans for Bobby Creep. You know what I'm saying? So that particular relationship wasn't, wasn't helping me as far as the plans I had for Bobby Creep. Much like Cassius. Why are he speaking in the third person? Nigga, you are Bobby Creek Water. Bobby seemed to believe that Interscope knowing that an M record would pull in huge numbers meant that the shady artists were always a lesser priority. Basically it was this, M or Shady had to pay some bills. They had uh, released some projects that didn't do as well as they planned or what have you. So M had to go make that right. And M making that right, people uh, had to do more weight as an artist. You are your first concern. You know what I'm saying? Like I am my first concern, so I, I, I couldn't afford to do it. Speaking a year on, Bobby got more specific about some of the other problems plaguing the label. Namely, he believed M's drug addiction derailed the Shady Re-Up era. It was an unfortunate thing that a cast that talented and all the plans that we had didn't come to fruition. As far as Eminem is concerned, I can possibly speak on what he was going through at the time. I do know that the industry in this game has a lot of pressures, and the higher up you go, the harder it gets. He was responsible for a label and being responsible for artists and their dreams. To be honest, I was definitely worried about my status as an artist. Like many of his fellow artists, Bobby's album would finally surface in 2011 and did essentially nothing. <laughs> Now, he hasn't even released music in over three years. With Bobby, the shady label mishandled him so much to the point that he could never really get a solid buzz. While almost a decade later, Griselda's West Side Gun and Conway the Machine would only escape the label with their careers intact thanks to their unrelenting hustle. A Buffalo rap crew who brought their own form of brooding boom bap to the world, Conway the Machine and West Side Gun signed to Shady as part of a joint deal. Meanwhile, their cousin, Benny the Butcher, opted to remain independent. After the release of WWE, WCD on the label, the crew looked to be moving in a positive direction. But as time went on, their leader Westside Gun felt that the label didn't sufficiently promote him or Griselda, which he publicly displayed on Twitter in a tweet that read, I wonder if at Shady Records knows we're nominated for a BET award tonight. Around Why would you say that? Why would you even say that nigga? the time that he dropped his own solo shady release who made the sunshine a fan noticed eminem had given a plug to the alchemist's album which wasn't released via shady but not to west side gun's project that dropped the same day no post of west side gun's album that's on your own label lol what the fuck after all that went down west side saw it as the final straw and he left i'm all shady that was that was the last joint right yeah i'm all shady i'm, I'm actually a free agent how's that feel Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who made the sunshine was, was it? Later, Westside argued that he saw the shady platform as a means to expand their brand, not to become a part of the Eminem system. When I was signed to Shady, I never even wanted to do an Eminem song. Because it don't even mix. I don't do shit just because, oh, I'm with, I'm with Shady. I got to do a hundred Eminem songs. It wasn't like that. It was just like, you know, the opportunity of being over there with them guys. That's all I really wanted, you know what I'm saying? But I still wanted to have my sound. Despite the fact that he initially seemed I to mean, be- I mean, but it's better like this. You never knew if Eminem wanted to go make that sound with you. I mean, hey, think about it. Knowing how Eminem can be able to glide over at any sound if he wanted to. Who says he couldn't make that sound? Because knowing how Griselda's like, like gr gritty undertone type of lyricism and music, who says Eminem couldn't go into that gutter with you? Who said Eminem can't make that type of sound too? Because nigga, if you've seen how his songs be in such, he had songs that can touch your heart. He has songs that can make you go in the club. He has songs that he has songs that make you really think. And he got he got sounds that have like some vivid imagery and such. Like nigga, 
all I can say is for the songs that have like vivid imagery where it's like ugh, all I can say is check out Kim and trust me that song will make you really think of ugh, and such but either way M knows how to manipulate her basically M is like a chameleon he can fit into any environment that you put him in or any song that you put him on and trust me he will glide over that bitch with ease at peace with his decision hey, Westside has since argued with Eminem fans online even majorly shading his former label boss bro think he's shady I'd rather jump off a bridge speaking of getting oh, off on the wrong foot with Eminem's audience his brother Conway the Machine was always uncomfortable on shady within weeks of getting his first Eminem collab on bang he took aim at M's listenership and how they fixated on the label boss what was that tidal wave like when suddenly all the Eminem fans became aware of what you guys were doing a bunch of a bunch of nerds and, and stands and shit that don't they don't understand me and don't relate to what I bring to the table with my music. You know what I'm saying? It's really? Just like fuck all that. Where is M? <laughs> Where is M and M? We want an M album. Much like his brother, Conway fulfilled his deal and bounced with his album God Don't Make Mistakes. Not even given so much as an Eminem feature to boost sales, he actually said that Shady didn't have any tangible effect on his project. How much input did M have on this project, if any? None. None. What about feedback-wise? Did, did he give you feedback? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna keep it on it. I went to Detroit and it was in, you know, M studio, M, Paul, Royce, and... Played them album front to back, and he fucked with every record. I was like, this shit, this, this is ready to go. When it was released, the project, which was met with critical acclaim, landed at 175 on the charts. And in a testament to just how poorly Shady functions as a label these days, he actually has better numbers on the independently released From a King to a God two years prior. From Westside Boogie being forced to wait three years between the release of Everything's For Sale and More Black Superheroes, which led him to fail to chart the second time around, to new artists like Rip and Easy Mill getting about as much traction as they would have if they stayed independent, the legacy of Shady Records is really in jeopardy. So is there any way back for the label, or is it doomed to be seen as a failure? For one thing, what's clear is that the formula of giving them a shady feature and expecting this to amount to a career is not working. Particularly when they don't ever get a placement on his albums, which would be a far superior platform. Last time he had someone that was on his label appear on his album was 50 Cent, and that was in 2009. Besides that, the label which proudly declares trust us as their motto at the top of their website doesn't actually have any kind of identity at this point other than being known for Shady himself. No one fits on the Shady roster because M doesn't do anything with any of the artists. He should just retire the label. As a result of this, the perception is that signing to M isn't some life-changing event. Instead, it's just a similar pattern which will ultimately lead to another flaw. Sign to Shady and you get an Eminem verse, a sway freestyle that says Eminem's new artist goes off, and then they stop answering your That's call. That's crazy. From Obi Trice onwards, each man on the Shady roster, not named 50 Cent, has never been able to escape the M connection. So much so that even after they leave, many of them can't get their careers back on track. And unfortunately, someone with a fanbase like Shady's is unlikely to ever be a successful label boss when the expectation of his fans are a part of the problem. Eminem's fanbase is so globally big that a majority won't give anyone else the time of day after they hear M's part in a track that he does. Not gonna lie, some t I mean, hey, it's like No Life Shack says, if anyhow that you have Eminem on your song, nine times out of ten, that's the Eminem songs now. That is Eminem song. <laughs> so. I kind of agree because what can I say? M just knows how to freaking spit some shit that makes you go holy shit. So, I, in a way, I'm not trying. It's basically like this for me. You know what? Let me make him finish this off. A majority won't give anyone else the time of day after they hear M's part in a track that he does for a new artist. No matter what you spit about or how different you are from Eminem, you're always going to be compared to him by a mass majority of people who hear you for the first time. Signing to Shady should be a golden opportunity. However, it's clear it's anything but that. And unless newer signees like Grip and Easy Mill can change that perception, then the failures of his label will be one of the few blemishes on M's Hall of Fame career.
If you're interested in finding out what happened to Slaughterhouse and Yellow Wolf, you can click the videos on the screen. I mean, hey. It's not like he's saying anything wrong. First of all, shout out to Luis. Let me give him a little like right there. But it's not like he's saying anything wrong. I'm just guessing maybe sometimes they feel like, to me, this is how I look at it. And this is just my opinion. You can say I'm wrong if you want. It is what it is. But to me, I feel like how would I say this? Sometimes, if you don't have that like determination to, cause I mean, M had to really. If you were on Eminem's radar just to really outperf, like really, basically, what I'm trying to say is. If you was on Eminem's radar at first and he signed to your record, then nine times out of ten, you have got to make sure that you find a way out, find a way, and make sure you always stick on that record with Eminem no matter what. Be on par with Eminem and such. Cause think about it. Like that comment said earlier, the only person who was at par with Eminem, you can say. I'm just paraphrasing was 50 cent where anytime when M drop 50 would be on it and anytime when 50 drop M would be on it so and he's saying it was in 2009 but all I'm saying is think about it 50 cent would had that type of power and type of star power and such same time as M was having that star power so it is what it is but all I'm saying is at the end of the day as long as there was no hateful thing but you as you hear from me you always hear that at the end of the day it's not much the re it's not even much of the thing with Eminem and such it's much more of with the records but like I said with that Cassius thing earlier you see how that even though technic even though that they're not in the label no more and such they still have a connect they still saying that they're family for life cause hell even with the freaking Benzino situation this year and such you see how Cash is just literally dropped a diss track on Benzino even though he's not with Eminem no more not like with the label no more he still had the love and connection there with Eminem and the label and such like music wise and such business wise don't know but music wise and brotherhood wise in a way yes that he had to drop that diss track so hey sometimes if the business part of the whole thing don't work out at the end of the day as long as i still got love for the music wise and love for one another hey that's how i look at it it's all good but y'all let me know what y'all thought about this down in the comments below what you think about this video is it because i see the question there in the description where it says sometimes is it is it the labels well basically let me return this question to y'all and y'all can answer this down in the comments below is it the labels fault or is it the artist's fault you let me know but it's been your boy homo ziggy signing out stay positive keep the vibes up i'm out